Hello there and welcome to my beginner's guide for Book of Hours. This will be a two-part video series where I will be guiding you through the basic game experience of this one. After these two videos I hope you will be able to just uncover all the secrets that are hidden inside this game without feeling like I took away all the fun from you. Although I got to emphasize before I begin here, this game thrives on experimentation, discovery, and trying to find the solutions on your own. So I highly recommend you to try around a little bit before you get yourself the help of this guide. That being said, let's get right into the beginning of this one. We're going to get started with a new game here. And the new game experience is that we're getting crash landed here at the shore and I'm immediately going to pause the game. So I'm going to talk about the controls here very quick. Things that happen will be communicated via text boxes. Up here we have our inventory. This, These buttons up here, they're not that interesting for you now. We're going to cover these later. Up here we have our character interaction fields. This one is for interaction, interacting with items to... Uh, look at them, read them, or whatever, and we will have another interaction field down here later. This here is our inventory of different things that happen around us. When you click anywhere, you get a little bit of a text box introducing to you what you see, and then there's all these icons. When we click this lock here, this is where we get told how to get further. There is an empty box here, and this is one of the key elements of the game. This box, you have to find out what to fill it with. Since we don't have anything, we can just turn on the time and let the timer run through here. As you noticed here, now we have a little bit of a description here. Lots of cryptic icons, we're going to talk about these later, and we can uncover these cards. Press collect. As you see here, we now have acquired a few things. Now we have this one where we can utilize our skill to remember things, basically. And if you click an empty box in Book of Hours, you see it highlights everything around you, which you can use this box on. Here we see nothing in our position interacts with this one. I'm going to explain how to read these things in a hot minute, but for now, we leave it like that. So since we are crash landed, we can now either read the book that we have salvaged, or we can think about the storm that uh, brought us here. And as you see here, no, there's nothing we can do. If this field here remains gray, you have done something wrong. Here the text box tells us that we're supposed to read the book even, so at the beginning you get some help. Here, now we can select this, but we still cannot start it, so we click and we can now select either our health, but that is not what we're going to get there. What we need is the memory of the storm. So via experimentation, you can find out how to solve the riddle. So we start here, and now we speed up the process a little bit, and we get a little bit of a description. We collect that, and now the next step here is you get to select what kind of skills you want to learn. This is the basic procedure here. If you take out all the uh, arcane and occult descriptions. So every one of these uh, three skills has a different taste and will lead you to a different playthrough. When you are ready to choose, you just select that book and then you go for this and then you select that one. Feel free to choose to your own liking and then you get a little bit of a description of what happened in between and then you get to select another skill. As you see here, this is covered, you can get them out, and if you hold the right mouse button, you can also adapt how large that screen's supposed to be. This one is to sort the cards. Here we get to select yet another skill. Feel free to try around whatever combinations you feel good with. There's a lot of different things that you can go for. And here again, first we need the book, and then we remember the skill. If you don't know what to what to pick, just pick anything and follow the story. There are no wrong decisions at this point. You get a little bit of a description of what to do next. And we now 
story-wise, remember that we know an old friend here, and now we get to do something with that. So we have now our skills back. These are parts of our soul, and the more of these you collect, the more things you can do per day. And as you see here, we have now a new interaction field, which tells us that we have acquired fear. So memories are temporary items. These other things here are all permanent. Things in this field are temporary things. So to get ourselves further now, we get back to the consider square. We don't see anything. Probably we can do something here. No, we don't. So at this point, it's all about experimentation. So we see that we can use a skill here and we can now go for something here. The forever character with skill uh, and his skills a little bit different and now we meet the fisherman one way or another you will always meet the fisherman and now it's time to talk about challenges here when you click this one the game actually tells you what you need to do and i want to explain this now so the game ex uh, tells you that the card that goes in here cannot have the skeptical icon it needs to have one sky icon and it has to have one assistance icon. So the difference here is that often you have different variants that can pass this check. So here we check the fisherman, he has sky, he has assistance, but he is still skeptical. So that means story-wise this guy doesn't trust us. So we better talk with him, don't we? So he doesn't like us and we can now get ourselves a little bit of help. You can also double click those cards and put them in there. So now we talk with them obviously this will remove the skepticism and now we can just put this friendly guy in here as you see here now it uh, gets highlighted also and now we can unlock red croc village so we have now discovered our first uh, locations here we have now an old friend's address so here if you don't know where to go you can always read the text in this case, the rectory is here. You can have friends either with the rector, uh, with the reverend here, or with the kills, or with the, uh, the smith of the town. It all depends on the things you've selected at the beginning. So we need to fill in something else. By now, we know that we just need to check this out. And now we can get ourselves some shelter. Now we get to use the system of the game to get acquainted with the rest of the city. Basically, the story will tell you that people are very, very skeptical and they don't like you. Therefore, all of these houses are locked. So to get in there, you just click that empty box and here we get again told what we need to do. We need, as an essential thing, somebody to introduce us. And here, the introduction person has to have one of these six icons. One is enough, we don't need more than one. So we go to a friend at the rectory, and as you see here, we can talk to him. Here's the same thing. We need to have either lantern or knock, and it has to be an element of the soul. So these are elements of the soul, and here we see this element has the lantern icon and the sky icon, so it is good to go. So. Basically, we now get to use the help of the, rec of the Reverend to introduce us to people. The first place to go for is the inn. Here you use the Reverend's help to get introduced there. And at this place, you can now refresh your skills. If you pay some money, you can re refresh your skills. They do refresh by the end of the day though. And more importantly, you can draw your book at the place here. So we cannot do anything besides drawing our book because our skills are all depleted and we don't have anything else uh, we can go for. So we have to wait until our book is dried and that brings us up to the next thing we can do. So the book can be now brought to the post office where we get something from the dear lady here. I highly recommend you to read through these and you gain some money and some letter telling you the background story of your place. So with that money, we can now regenerate our skills. 
and you can also the hire the help of people. So if you put in too much money, you get a person's uh, help here, but that is not a bad thing because the miner is the person which can introduce you to the smith. Therefore, we didn't do anything wrong here. We got back all the change that this uh, money had. You see the total worth of the money here in terms of pence. And now we use the smith to get introduced to the smith Denzel. And we will get ourselves the skill here re uh, regenerated. You use a smaller coin here and then you will not hire somebody, but instead recharge the skill. Up here you see the passage of the time, and it just shows you that when it is time for the regeneration of your skills automatically. Paying for your skill regeneration is something you should really only do if you have, if you are in a hurry. So here we go for another adventure with Reverend Timothy, and if you check this out now, Timothy can introduce us now to the kills. There we go. So now we have unlocked all the people in the in the village. Sometimes you have to juggle around a little bit. You can't always hire the uh, people here in the in the tavern for a shilling, or you can also um, use these people and hire them. At the smithy, if you put in a soul fragment that has one of these three icons, you can hire the help of somebody. It works like this. The person which is your friend will always work for free with you together. The other people in the town, they always want 12 pence for their help. What is their help good for, you might ask yourself. Well, as you see here, there's more locks around all over the place. And to unlock places, you need people's help. You always need assistance to unlock some new place, and that assistance has to have some of these skills. That is very important. So we're going to go over to our friend the Reverend one more time. Pay some money here. By the way, if you want to make your money smaller, you can always carry it to the post office. And now we're going to go for Oh, well, I wasted money here. At night, you cannot uh, recruit your help with the friends. Well, my bad. So at the beginning of the next day, your memories all fade away. And you might ask yourself, Icon, what are memories good for? Well, I'm going to show you. So we can now recruit Reverend Timothy. And if ever your, your helpers aren't good enough to help you there, as you notice here, he's just uh, the right fit here. Here's one thing that you can do. You can talk to your assistant, and then you can collaborate either with your soul fragments or with your memories. What does that do? Well, if I put in this fragment here, he will inherit the skills that are here. So this way you can power up your assistant's help and unlock new uh, new rooms. In this scenario here, we don't need to power him up, but uh, well, he does the job just uh, like that. It's important to note that you can power up your assistants only temporarily and only once per category. So only one fragment, only one memory, and only one, well, whatever you give them, food, candles, you name it. So over here, we have now another uh, challenge. This is one that our friend Reverend Timothy could not solve because he doesn't have the uh, necessary aspects. So to hire the other people, you need to have some card that uh, has one of these icons, as usual here. Just click that thing and you can see it. And you can also see here what kind of skills the people will have that you recruit. So the Smith will have edge and uh, forge skills for you and some heart. The kills, well, they are a little bit uh, weird. These are two people. There's one person here following the winter path and the other person here giving you grail skills. And the Reverend has these two skills. So this way you can check out what kind of person you wanna have. And at the uh, tavern, you can always hire somebody. The interesting part here is that they always um, 
are different at every uh, time of the year. So in spring, you hire different people than in summer and so on and so forth. So here at this place for the uh, gate place, we need the help of the smith. So we go on in there. And here you need to put in the money for the payment here. This thing here will now run through. And now we have paid for uh, our help here. And as you see here, this guy has these skills. I could now talk to him and infuse him with other skills if I'd like to, but we don't need to because we already have everything we require on him. So let's unlock this place. And then we're almost done with the first part of this uh, video. I'm keeping things here the way I do. So I hope that you still have some uh, interest in experimenting around we are just getting started here though the first part of the game has been beaten here and now we see the library which i will go for in part two what's really important to note here as a little bit of a foreshadowing when you zoom on in here every room in the library is fully geared out with items that you can interact with and that's why i'm doing an entirely new video on this whole thing there the only thing that i want to show at the end of this video is that the key to hush house can be found in here and then you can unlock this place here with the key and then you have access to the rest of the house which you will be unlocking the same way you unlocked the places in the city and the bridge already I'm just going to show you a last time so we make sure that we have understood everything here so when you're clicking on these new places here you can now see you need an assistant who has either forge 2 or lantern 2 for this room you you get the idea by now so this way you can unlock more and more of the library and in the next video i'm going to talk about what the heck all these things are good for, how to read books, how to interact with workbenches, how to expand your skills, and how to read that journal. So stay tuned, and I hope you enjoyed that one. I'm really doing my best here to keep the things concise and not too spoilery. Let me know in the comment section how that one worked out. Leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed, and consider subscribing. It's a big, big help for my channel, and it doesn't cost you a penny. So, have a good time, thanks for watching, and see you soon.